This is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Hypothesis Testing. And in this video, we're going to look at simple versus simple hypotheses in the normal distribution setting. So here's an example. We're going to let Xi be distributed with this density, which is going to be a normal distribution. We're going to let sigma squared be known, and we have a sample size of n. Now the joint density is the product of those individual densities, which we get this. Let's let mu be in the parameter space omega that has two points, mu naught and mu one. Um, let's create an alpha level, alpha 0.05 level test that maximizes power, or which equivalently minimizes the probability of a type 2 error. So our hypothesis that mu is either mu naught versus that mu is mu one. That's the test we want to create. Now, I'm going to say we assume that mu1 is greater than mu0, and I will show you where that plays a part. Okay, initially it doesn't. Now, it's a, these are this is a simple hypothesis because there's only one value in this hypothesis in the parameter space, and this is only one value. So it's a simple versus simple. And the Neyman Pearson lemma tells us if we set up the hypothesis this way, so this is our test function, a 1, gamma, or 0. You know, if, if phi is a 1, we reject. If it's a 0, we do not reject a null. If it's, if it's gamma, we reject a null hypothesis with probability gamma. And we, we set it up, we set the linear combination up like this. So the inequality goes this way and this way, and that's equal. Now, this does not play a part in this at all. It, it, it's irrelevant which one is bigger or smaller in this Neyman Pearson, you know, setting. So now let's find alpha. So we want it to be a 0.05 test. So now we need to find C and gamma, because those currently are unknown, that makes this a 0.05 test. So let's let uh, alpha phi is the expected value of phi under the null hypothesis which is the probability that this likelihood ratio is greater than C right so it's this probability so if we divide both sides by F of 0 then then we're in this setting and then it's uh, since it's the expected value then it's this times this probability now, let's, uh, before we look at these probabilities, let's get a handle on this likelihood ratio, which is what this is. So, F1 of our data means that we're under the alternative hypothesis, which that mu is 1. So, when we create this, the joint density, we have to put mu of 1 in here. Remember, we're assuming sigma squared is known. And so f of 0, we put in mu 0, and then we simplify. This cancels with that, and this e we can take to the top, and then of course change the sign, and we get this. Now, the next, we can factor certain things out. So, actually what we do is we expand this. We get xi squared minus 2xi mu 1 plus mu 1 squared. And then the same way here. And then when we combine those, we get something that looks like this. And I'm skipping a few steps because the video will probably be a little long anyway. Now, one reason this is important is what is random in here? You know, everything's a constant except for X bars. That's our sample data. So that's random. So the, this is the likelihood ratio that's a function of x bar and notice that it's mo it's a monotone ratio in x bar which means if x bar gets bigger this quantity gets bigger if it gets smaller this quantity gets smaller and I'm just pointing that out now because we're going to examine monotone likelihood ratios in more in depth in a, in a few videos but we don't need it for this video so now Let's look at these probabilities. So let's look at this one. The probability that the likelihood ratio is greater than C. 
So we put this in here. Now we take everything that's a constant and move it to the other side. Right? So if we take the log of natural log of both sides, then you know this goes away. Um, then we can multiply that over and then add this, and then we get we can isolate x bar by itself. So the probability that x bar is greater than this. Now, since this is all a constant, let's just call it c prime instead of c, because we've it's a new constant. Now, x bar is normally distributed with mean. Now remember we're under the null hypothesis, so it's distributed with normally with mean mu zero and standard deviation sigma divided by square root of n. So if we subtract and then divide by, this becomes a standard normal. And then this is, this is again just some constant. But if this is a standard normal and we want this probability to be as close as possible to 0.05, right? So this is z. Then this value has to be 1.645 for this probability to occur. So now, once we know that, we can start back solving. So if this is 1.645, then we can solve for C, which is this. Then we can calculate this probability. So the, um, the probability that C is equal to this likelihood ratio, which then if we go through the same steps here, it's probably that x bar is equal to some value. But this is a continuous distribution, so this probability is zero. So we can essentially remove gamma from our test function. So the, the most powerful alpha level test, actually at 0.05, is this. So our test function is a 1 or 0, and it's a 1, meaning reject H naught, if this is true. So if x bar, you know, or the sample mean, is greater than this value, we reject. It supports the alternative. If it's less than this value, then the data suggests that we should accept H0. Some people say do not accept H0. But now the power is the expected value of our test function under the alternative hypothesis. And so we have our rejection region, which is here. So it's the probability that x bar is greater than this value, but under the alternative. <clears throat> well, if we, this is a, so x bar is normally distributed with mean mu1 and standard deviation sigma over the square root of n. So if we subtract mu1, from both sides, you know, subtract mu1 and then divide by the standard deviation to both sides, then it reduces to this. And then this this is the power. That's the power function. And my question, how can we how can power be increased if we know this? Now remember this is for a given sample size. But if we increase the sample size, meaning this number gets bigger, and we're assuming that mu1 is bigger than mu naught, so this is negative, so it becomes more negative, and the probability of being bigger than a more negative number increases. And then of course another way to increase power is make this difference bigger. So the, the difference in the means that we want to detect larger, that's another way to increase power. So now let's look at another example. Um, let's let xi be uh, distributed with this density, which is again a normal distribution. But here we're going to assume we know mu and that sigma squared is unknown. Sample size n, the joint density for our data is this, so it's a normal distribution, or it's the product of those individual normal distributions. Let's let sigma squared be in the parameter space omega, but have only two values, sigma naught squared and sigma one squared. We want to create an alpha level test that maximizes the power. Now, I left it general here. So we have the null hypothesis is that the population variance is equal to sigma naught squared versus that it's equal to sigma one squared. We're going to assume that this is greater than sigma naught. You know, if not, then we can just switch those and, and make it this. The test function is a 1 or a 0. It's a um, Neyman Pearson tells us this is the form of the most powerful test. Then 
you know, let's look at the likelihood ratio. If we divide both sides by F0, we get this. And then this is the, um, the ratio of the likelihood. So it's the likelihood ratio. This is assuming that the alternative is true. So we have a sigma 1 squared here. And this is under the null hypothesis. So we put sigma 0 squared right here and here. Now, the two pi's cancel, and we're left with this. Now, I, I flip them to make that exponent positive. Um, I take this to the numerator, and I can factor out this sum because it's constant, and we're left with this. Now, to find alpha, you know, we need to take the expected value of our test function under the null hypothesis, and then that's equal to this probability. Oh, well, here's a side note. Notice in this test function, I left out gamma. And the reason is that we're in a continuous setting. And so the, the probability that these two equal is zero. So we can just leave out that uh, gamma. So this is a non-randomized statistical test. So now let's look at this. Um, this right here is, so we plug this in here, and now I'm skipping steps. So we take the log of both sides, and then we divide by this quantity, and then we um, divide by this quantity, and we end up with this here. <coughs> now, this is all constant, so let's just call it C prime, and, we, and then this comes down. Now, this right here is, is a, a, a well-known result. If we divide this by the variance associated with it, which is, remember, we're under the null hypothesis, so the variance of our data is sigma zero squared, sigma naught squared, and then the this is a pretty well-known result that this follows a chi-square distribution with n degrees of freedom. <clears throat> so we just need to find <coughs> this, the, this value in a chi-square distribution with n such that being greater than it is 1 minus alpha. And then that makes, that creates an alpha level test. So that's our um, Rejection region, um, which we call this generically. It's the alpha squared value that, such that the tail area on the left, or I mean the tail area on the right, is 1 minus alpha. Now, so this, the MP alpha level test is this, right? So we put this value here. Then if we multiply that to the other side, we get this. So if this sum is greater than this quantity we reject. If it's less than this quantity we don't reject. Now let's look at the power and then this is the last thing that we're going to do. It's the power is the expected value of our test function under the alternative region. So it's the probability that this quantity is greater than that which is what we have here assuming the alternative is true. So now if we divide this by the variance of x you know, xi, which is sigma 1 squared, we have to do that to both sides, then this is a chi-square distribution with n degrees of freedom. So we can find, so this is a value, so we can find the probability that a chi-square degrees of, you know, chi-square chi -square random variable with n degrees of freedom is bigger than some value. We can look it up on a, a table in the back of a book, or we can use R software. And that's it. And so that's the power. Now, this question is not quite as obvious. How can power be increased? So it turns out that if the separation between sigma 1 and sigma 0 is big, so remember we were assuming this condition, then this ratio gets smaller, which makes this smaller, which shoves it left. So it's a smaller number. So the random variable is bigger than even a smaller number. So this probability increases. So that's one way. And the other way is 
we increase our sample size. And to me, this is not quite as obvious. So this is a random variable, a chi-square random variable with n degrees of freedom. And this is a chi-square random variable with n degrees of freedom. Um, so it's not as obvious. But when you, if you were to look at the picture of these, under the null hypothesis, you know, the chi-square distribution likes, looks like this. And, the, and under the alternative, it looks like this. So there's a lot of overlap. But... Oh, it's this, and then um, not an overlap. It's the same chi-square, so it's the same picture. So this is the alternative region, and then being greater than some value, and so this is actually shoved to the left. So the area is bigger than that rejection region. But as you increase in, act, this chi-square distribution gets spread out. So the difference between the cutoff value and this value here that's being multiplied by a number smaller than one it actually gets shoved more and more this way so the separation is bigger so the area under the curve which is the probability is increased okay hopefully that wasn't too convoluted but that's the reason well i hope you enjoyed this video uh, i sure did please like it subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye